I want to talk about osmolality because I think that once you understand osmolality, a lot of other things are going to make sense. Things like albumin, things like dehydration, things like CHF and edema are going to kind of click if you have a better understanding of osmolality. So our normal value for osmolality is about 260 to 280 milliosmoles per, per kilogram. All right, and, and the reason we're running this lab, so let me just tell you the reason we're going to run this lab. So we want to know our, our osmolality of our blood because what it does, it, it uh, helps us monitor electrolyte balance, acid-base balance, and hydration. It also does and have, plays an important role in letting us uh, determine the function of antidiuretic hormone. All right, so basically what osmolality is, is it's a measure of the particles in a solution. Okay, the size, shape, and charge of the par particles do not impact osmolality, and that's what's really important to understand. What we're really trying to determine is what is the measure of particles in a solution? And so with osmolality, we're really measuring the osmolality of the blood. How many particles are in the blood, basically? With osmosis, what we're really talking about is we're talking, you know, we have two solutions, right? Separated by a semi-permeable membrane, okay? Think of like a coffee filter between two solutions of water. And in each of those solutions of water, we have a different volume of water, okay? We also have a we have, but we have an equal volume of salt or whatever. So what we're really talking about with osmosis is we're talking about the flow of water from an area of low concentration of solute to an area of high concentration of solute until those two levels, until the osmolality basically of those two liquids, those two containers is equal. So what that means basically, if we have 10 particles of salt in one container and 10 particles of salt in the other container, but we have 25 mils in one, the concentration of those particles is going to be much higher, right? We have 10 parts per 25 mils. Where if we have 100 mils in the other one and 10 particles of salt, we have 10 particles of salt to every 100 mils. So what's going to happen is the fluid is going to move from the area of 100 over to the area of 25 to try to equal it out until both of them are, are at uh, whatever it is, 75 or whatever um, mils to every 10 particles of, of, of salt. So that's kind of what osmolality is measuring. It's really measuring what's the measure of all the particles in our solution. We can measure, it's gonna help us measure electrolyte balance, acid base balance, and hydration. And some of the ways it's gonna do that is it can kind of measure uh, the function of, of antidiuretic hormone as well. And so for example, in a patient who has diabetes insipidus, where they're not able to concentrate their urine, they're just gonna be dumping tons and tons of fluid, liters and liters of fluid per day uh, through their urine. And so what we're going to see is we're going to see their, their osmolality go up quite a bit because they have a much higher measure of particle in their blood, okay? Now, on the other hand, if we have a patient who has syndrome of inappropriate uh, antidiuretic hormone, we're going to see that the patient is going to have much lower osmolality. Their blood is much more dilute. They have a lower measure of particles in the solution. And what we're measuring is the blood. Okay, so that's really how that works. So some things that are going to cause uh, your level to go up would be dehydration. Like we talked about, the patient's going to become very dehydrated, very low volume in an instance of like diabetes insipidus. Okay, hypercalcemia, hypernatremia, hyperglycemia, mannitol therapy, these osmotic diuretics are going to make us lose fluid but retain our electrolytes. Okay, mannitol is, is one of these osmotic diuretics. So these types of conditions which are going to cause us to lose fluid, retain some of our electrolytes. You know, that's, those are instances where we're going to see that osmolality or the measure of particles in the, in, in the fluid go up. Things that are going to cause us to have decreased levels are things like hyponatremia, overhydration, and syndrome of inappropriate ADH. So that's really how it works. I hope that kind of makes sense of how that really works. We have other videos that talk about fluid balance, but I want you just to think of it basically as, you know, it's really measuring how much particle we have in our blood. That's what osmolality is. We want it to be about 280, and that's where our blood is happy. That's, that's you know, homeostasis. That's where it wants to be. And whenever we are in situations where we're going to lose fluid, lose a lot of fluid, our osmolality is going to go up because our measure of our electrolytes, our measure of our particles in the blood is going to go up. Whenever we retain a lot of fluid or we become overhydrated, uh, situations like syndrome inappropriate ADH or overhydration, we're going to see our osmolality go down in, in relation to how much fluid we have the concentration of our electrolytes has gone down or our particles. That is osmolality.